One of the books that I pulled up my shelf, I don't know how many times um, during the last 20 years, it's made a profound impact on me. I go back to some of the concepts in there over and over again. It's a book called uh, The Mind and the Brain, Dr. Jeffrey Schwartz. I love the subtitle, Neuroplasticity and the Power of Mental Force. He's the first guy that I came across that uh, talked about the physical brain and the mind being something different. Uh, the brain body is the physical part of us, but the mind, what do you want to call it? The spirit, the soul, intelligence, whatever it is, they're, they're different things and they, the body acts on the mind, the mind acts on the body. And it just makes so much sense to me as I have worked with those who are struggling with uh, addiction issues, anxiety, depression, so forth. Listen to this sentence, and then I want to talk about it for just, just a couple minutes. The only willful choice one has is the quality of attention one gives to a thought at any moment. So this book is about free will. This book is about choice. Um, <clears throat> It's kind of mind-boggling to me that there really are people in the world today who don't believe in free choice. They are uh, of what's called a materialist mindset, uh, a determined mindset, just thinking that we are kind of robots and we're acted upon by our genes and there's really nothing we can do individually to change that. just makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't agree with it. it would, if that were the case, life would have absolutely no meaning. So I love the concept of choice, of agency, that we are the ones that determine the quality of our life. If we don't like where things are going, we absolutely have the capacity to do something uh, about it. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Schwartz, he, he worked with those who struggled with severe OCD issues. And he, he absolutely acknowledged and recognized that the brain impacts the mind. When the brain somehow gets wired a little bit differently, it's off, meaning that it will send compulsive thoughts to do something from the deeper regions of the brain. And the prefrontal cortex, higher functioning part of the brain, where the mind works through, the mind can inhibit and restructure and reframe the compulsion or drive that is hitting a person and, and they can actually go and perform another behavior. One of the key concepts has to do with awareness, increasing our level of awareness. This is what mindfulness is all about, learning to recognize certain thoughts, recognize triggers and he scientifically, in the book, it, it brings it out, shows that when we have um, a compulsion or a trigger or an idea to do something, there's a part that fires in the brain before any action happens. And this reminds me of that classical statement by Viktor Frankl. He is so credible to me. Viktor Frankl is a guy who lived through the horrors of, of the Holocaust in a concentration camp for a number of years. I think it was four years and, and lost most of his loved ones. Um, and even in those conditions, uh, he, he, this is why he's so credible when he said this. Notwithstanding that all his freedom was taken away physically, he was imprisoned, he was told what he could eat, he was forced to work, he was freezing, holes in his shoes, so forth. And uh, anyway, here's the statement that he, he made. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing. The last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. So back to what Jeffrey Schwartz talks about, 
He says there really is. Scientifically, when we have an intention to do something, there's a little space between stimulus, uh, even a thought. There's a space where we choose our response. So back to what Viktor Frankl says. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response, and in our response lies our growth and our freedom. Except for the rare cases where individuals are struggling with severe mental disorders, like schizophrenia. So the science behind schizophrenia, when people are hearing different voices and so forth, this part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, isn't working. I mean, it's not working correctly in that it can send a thought going, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to follow that. So there's only a few rare cases where we don't have the capacity to make the changes that we truly want. We have free will and free won't. And when we inhibit a trigger from coming and do something different, neuroplasticity means that the very hard wiring in our brain through repeated, repeated effort, what, what uh, Dr. Schwartz talks about, mental force. That means it's an energy, a thought, a perception. And as a matter of fact, going back to Viktor Frankl, there was a time when he was, he was dumb. He was out on a march and he was malnourished, had holes in his shoes, it was freezing in the winter time, and they had to go out and work. Can you imagine that? You know, with a shovel hitting, hitting frozen ground, trying to do stuff in any way, he just kind of stumbled and, and hit the ground. And when he was on the ground, and it was the worst place to be because the, the soldiers would come and beat people who were on the ground, he, he was down there and thinking, wow, is this really the end? Am I going to be able to get through this at all? And then he said he had a thought, a vision. This again, why a vision statement, mental force, putting something out there in, in, in the future for yourself to draw on. He saw himself in his mind's eye projecting into the future, standing in front of an audience, telling them how he survived the horrors of the Holocaust in a concentration camp. And he said when he had that thought, he found his body standing up and somehow he was able to continue on with that day. And subsequently to the point where one day he was actually standing in front of an audience telling them how he survived. And it has to do with our will, our agency. We really do have a choice. We cannot minimize the power of the physical brain and the physical body, especially when it hooks to limbic type instant gratification behaviors. That's why, that's why a drug addiction is so powerful. It rewires the brain to respond a certain way. It's why pornography is such a big issue. All of these things, however, just they do not provide lasting peace. They do not provide lasting happiness. There's instant gratification or being able to exert your will mindfully acknowledging the trigger when it comes. I'm not saying deny the trigger and I'm not saying this is easy but we do have a place within us that's all powerful. It's at the core this mindful peace the intelligent force within us that can cause things to happen through mental effort through projecting thoughts thinking certain things and Mindfulness is all about choosing which thoughts we're going to attend to. Life is a matter of attention, and we have the capacity to do that. So when, when one has a trigger, no matter what it is, and, not, and again, acknowledging how challenging it is to deal with triggers, uh, play the tape all the way through, stop for a moment, breathe, and go, if I act on this behavior, or act out this behavior where this thought wants me to go, what is going to be the outcome? The, uh, is the instant gratification going to be worth it? In that moment, we do have the power to go, I acknowledge that, I understand where it's coming from, 
I understand the craving because my brain, there it is, my limbic system, there it, capital I-T, it, my brain is wired a certain way and it's drawing me to do this through repetition. That's how we're wired. That's why breaking habits can be so challenging, but by mindfully becoming aware, it can be done. And instead of, of acting on the behavior, acknowledge it, and there it is. Yep, my body, brain is craving, anticipating a reward. And I, however, am going to turn and go this way. I experience that every morning at the gym. I just got back from the gym a little bit ago. Lifted heavier weights today than I ever have before. Just working, because I'm reading, I'm actually listening to this book on tape too, over and over again through the years. And anyway, I just plugged it in again today and I'm going, okay, every time I sit down to do a set of weights, there's a part in me, in my brain, that says, this is, this is causing too much pain. You, you can't do this. And then there's another part in my mind that says, well, let's just give it a try. I visualize that you can do this and then I just and then I just start I go to work and all of a sudden I'm able to accomplish things that I've never accomplished before and I kind of dance with that every day as we all do in, in different things but we are stronger than we think we are we do have the capacity to change to grow to develop to create that future vision of ourselves. I love, again, the playwright George Bernard Shaw. Life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. We do have the capacity within us to choose. I love a statement by the Greek philosopher Thucydides, a great warrior from history. Listen to what he said. Of all manifestations of power, restraint impresses men the most. Even Marcus Aurelius, one of the most powerful leaders in history. So this guy could have anything he wants. And then this is what he says. Pleasures, when unrestrained, become punishments. So there's got to be wisdom. There's got to be a balance in what we allow ourselves to do as we navigate through life. And it's always challenging, right? Do I have that other bowl of ice cream or not? Do I have six chocolate chip cookies or maybe just one? Do I exercise today or do I not? All of these things are constantly before us. But if you create a vision for yourself, how you want to be physically, um, relationship-wise, emotionally, spiritually, you create this vision, you're not there yet. We're never completely there, right? That just seems to be the purpose of life. We're always grasping and searching for that, but it's in that journey that life has its meaning. And you can find great joy in relationships, learning not to be a victim of anything, treat others with respect and dignity. It's, it's getting back to some of the, the foundational beliefs of the founding fathers of this, of this country um, and, and the Greek philosophers. Anyway. Just a couple of thoughts I want to share. Great, fantastic read. Um, I could just go on and on uh, about the value of this book and, and how it's impacted me from a scientific point of view of mindfulness. So again, you know, make today the best you possibly can. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. While time is still a-flying, for the same flower that blooms today, tomorrow will be a-dying. Again, the Latin term for that meaning, carpe diem, seize the day. We haven't lived today yet, and, and though we've lived many days in the past, we haven't lived today yet. So we don't know what's going to happen out there. So send some positive thoughts. Send some, get some positive direction for yourself as you're moving forward. Remember the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, no man ever steps into the same river twice because it's not the same river and he's not the same man. Today's a new day. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. If you've been working on something for um, a long period of time and been frustrated by it, hey, today may be the day. Keep moving forward. Uh, make it a great day.